What is going on, everybody? Shop Teacher D here. Um, what we are going through today is a neighbor buddy of mine brought me a snowblower, which hadn't run in two years because last year we had no snow. And it was nearly new, ran great before, but he realized uh, upon getting it ready a day or a day and a half before the predicted 10 and a half inch snowfall that it didn't run. So immediately when I get something like this, my brain thinks carburetor. So what do I do to test it? How do I get it running? Well, first things first, I'm accessing it. I pulled a panel with two 10 millimeter bolts, uh, which also happen to have Torx heads, uh, but I ended up going the 10 millimeter route. And I decided I was going to locate the carburetor, found the carburetor screen, which I pointed to, and um, I was going to do the first technician test. And one of the best things you can do in a situation like this is see if it runs on an external fuel source. So the external fuel source for me, in this case, was going to be carburetor cleaner. And sometimes if you don't have any of that, brake clean works as well. My concern was he had drained the uh, gas tank. And you'll see I'm doing my hillbilly uh, stuck float method where I'm actually hitting the float bowl of the carburetor with both a ratchet and a screwdriver to see if I could loosen what I believe to be a struck, stuck float because he had emptied the existing uh, old fuel from the tank with a turkey baster and filled it with fresh fuel. Uh, and in opening that fuel valve that you can see is on, there was still no fuel getting to the carburetor. So all of this was being done in a 28-degree um, garage next to my wife's car, my car, and a heater that I could not get to frustratingly ignite. So ironically, as I record this right now, it's heating me up while it is uh, negative one degrees right here in lovely uh, Chicago. So um, it was at this point, I followed the instructions and I tried to start it because uh, even though he had this uh, for two years, I just always want to make sure it is not a case of operator error. And I had full faith in him. So um, when you see me off camera, I'm hitting the push button. So what I do is introduce an external fuel source to confirm, in fact, that fuel is not getting from the gas tank. So I spray it a little uh, in the carburetor with the choke open. Then I close the choke and then I try to start it. So now is when I really wish I had better skills where I could um, overdub audio and like pause for a second. But I, I'm, I'm really terrible at that. So when hitting that it did sputter and bump a little. So oil was good. I didn't even want to pull a spark plug at this point to check that. So my next thought was I'm going to pull the carburetor screen and I am going to see if I could get closer uh, to the butterfly valve from the choke and get some spray really in there and see if I could get it to run off of that. My second thought was then if I can get it running or if it's running, uh, thumb over the choke and see if I could use the natural vacuum or suction of a, a two-year-old engine that's probably only had four snowfalls under its belt to suck uh, existing crud or such through the carburetor to kind of clean itself out. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. So let's take a look at what I do. So at this point, I am pulling the what I think is kind of like the air filter on this Arians mower. Um, California might call it a spark arrestor, but hey, there's no snow. Oh, uh, there is in Northern California. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you typically don't find a lot of snow in California. But what I did was I removed the spark arrestor so I could get the uh, projection or the spray of the carburetor cleaner to actually go in there really well. So with that being done, I, re I actually shut the choke off Got the spray, carb cleaner spray in there. And I actually never use uh, starting fluid because it's very explosive. And I've heard from people in the past that it can cause damage. So uh, spray a little in there. But I was also spraying at this point the bowl vents to the carburetor. And I fixed many a mower, many a snowblower, just literally by spraying those two little open ports, especially on the uh, air quote here, easy starts. I'm hitting it now with a couple primes. And I noticed the primer was also not engaging any fuel into the uh, the venturi of the carburetor here. So if you don't know what a venturi is, it's the restriction uh, or the restrictive passageway in the inlet of the carb. Uh, you'll notice I post uh, I poke to the 
float bowl because there was no fuel coming in. Um, at this point, I am holding the electric starter, forgetting the cameras at my elbow, and it was not firing. So I'm like, okay, maybe this could be a carburation issue or a spark issue. So, um, but I wouldn't have continued if I didn't hear that sputter. So a little bit of sputter, yes, uh, the delightful view of the wife's pegboard in the back, but um, I moved a little further at this point. So while I held down this electric start, uh, because it's easier, I realized this was in fact the carburetor, and you're going to see why in a second, but also, idiotically, I did have the fuel valve off. So, at this point, I'm thumbing over the choke to give it a full experience so that it can try to suck the um, idle ports or um, idle, uh, idle jets open, and here we go. So, I couldn't reach behind the, <laughs> the camera, and I apologize. Back to my amateur Bush League days. And it does, in fact, start to run. So some people would say lucky guess. Uh, I would say no, I've been doing this for a very long time as a hobby and a profession. So um, bumping the throttle caused it to immediately stall, further confirming the fact that it was an idle jet issue in the carb um, or main. It, it could have been either. But uh, the fact of the matter was we were still not getting fuel into the carburetor. So despite my fun little poking and smacking at the carburetor, that was an issue. Also, that smoke immediately set off the smoke detector. So as a result, I had to pause the video, get a ladder, bring the ladder over, pull the smoke detector down because the wife was trying to put our, at the time, five-week-old uh, daughter down for a nap. So although this was on a weekend, um, yeah, told myself I'd edit, I would edit this part out, but I figured you all might get slight enjoyment out of me struggling to pull a smoke detector off. So if at this point I've lost you, I apologize, but hold the smoke alarm. Now's a good chance while you're reading that to hit like, hit subscribe, because without you, I'm not going to continue making these videos. But I've slowly seen the subscription rate climb. I've uh, been reached out to by Super Clean, and they have me doing an upcoming giveaway. So keep an eye out for that. But back to the Arians snowblower. So uh, you'll see this bad boy run at the end, not to be a, a teaser or spoil there. But so my thought was now I was going to pull this upper cover to try and pull the entire carburetor off and give it a good clean. But here's the issue I had two bolts later, I realized you could see that extended vertical white portion, which is a choke extension. The choke extension is on that red knob and I was unable to get the red knob off. Had I been in a room temperature shop, I may have actually tried to get this off a little harder, but here was the problem. I was in a you know 28 degree garage. Uh, plastic becomes brittle. Although it is two years old, the last thing I wanna do is both break something that belongs to a friend of mine and a neighbor of mine uh, when I could also find another way. So with my uh, stubbornness, I realized can't get this off and it's it's worse than me now you can see the heater in the background the ladder in the background and i decide at this point we're gonna and and my daughter sleds we're gonna do a hillbilly rebuild so loosening up the nut on the float bowl of the carburetor um the first giveaway that i also had a fuel issue was the fuel was on and nothing came out that float bowl was bone dry boom but it was clean so at this point you realize what controls the amount of fuel going into the float bowl is going to be that needle on the seat. And a lot of these needles and seats aren't metal like they used to be. It's a metal needle with a slight nitro rubber tip. That, if stored one way or another, can actually mold to and um, kind of rest on the seat. And that's exactly what happened. So I pulled the pin here. I pulled the float. Um, and... It was at this point then I realized, hey, let's get some carburetor cleaner in here. I This sounds weird. Sprayed and massaged the needle a little bit to get the softness of the rubber back. And then I uh, sprayed up into the main. The main showed clear evidence of no obstructions by the fact that it um, came up into the inlet passage. And then uh, I sprayed the needle and seat. The um, Sorry, I sprayed the seat. I sprayed the needle. I sprayed the... Uh, 
sprayed the bull vents, um, sprayed needle and seat bull vents, main, needle, seat, yes, everything. I could. Um, the needle was spotless. The uh, Venturi was spotless. So I just gave it a good once over. And then you will see uh, very quickly to make sure there was no line obstruction due to the fact there was no filter that I could uh, see anywhere. I'm going to turn the fuel valve on ever so slightly for a split second um, and make sure there's proper flow from the tank. But uh, here we go, cleaning the main. I also clean the brass uh, fitting at the bottom too. So there you go. I turn the fuel on and off. You saw that fuel flow and we are in good shape at this point. So I did the narration because uh, lots of background noise here. Um, you wouldn't want to hear me clink clanking around. And this was kind of a last minute thought. So uh, while the visuals could be better, I just want you to get the main idea. That bowl goes in, or I'm sorry, the float goes in quite simply. The needle just rests on the plastic edge. It's a non-adjustable plastic float. It's not brass like the old ones were. The little spring was on there and I had a pretty difficult time just because I was at the bad angle. Um, because it's just a matter of lining that needle up into um, this, the hole that the seat's in and then putting the pin in. But um, with working around a camera, I believe my arm was one um, around one arm of the tripod. I was on the struggle bus. So I actually paused the camera at one point and the second the camera's off and I bumped the tripod, not worrying about filming, the needle went right in and it wasn't an issue at that point. So. We give it a second. You see the dry thumbnail of the uh, repeated carburetor cleaner spray. But the level of frustration here is mounting as it was literally just trying to thumb that uh, pin in that holds the float. And I simply couldn't do it. So um, you'll see in a second here, I pull it. I don't give up. I just give up on the filming aspect of things to get it in quickly and uh, continue the rest of the film. So you'll see that in a split second. Um, there we go. It's now in and I'm testing it with the flow of the fuel. The float goes up. The fuel stops flowing. At this point, I do a quick spray and wipe of the float bowl. We get the float bowl back on. I'm looking at the bottom of it because it has a slight little indent or detent or offset, whatever you want to call it. Um, making sure it's heading back on in the proper direction. Uh, the gasket is on that bottom bolt. The passageways are cleared. We get that in, and then I give it a snug tightening. And keep in mind, you have two soft metals here, the brass nut and the aluminum body of the carburetor. So you don't want to over, over tighten. Also, it didn't go on for a split second because the pin was slightly out. So slid right back in. Uh, gas gets on the bottom nut and or bottom bolt, whatever you want to call it. We get it in, and uh, I did off camera check the seat of uh, where that float bowl was mating to with the rubber gasket. It was quite clean, so we were in great shape. I give it a snug. I wipe it. I open the fuel valve, make sure there's no leakage. You can see I rub that with my hand, and it's dry. And then I give it just a little bit more with the ruler wrist, everybody. The ruler wrist, you tighten it with your fingers on the ratchet, not your whole wrist, and you watch for the muscles to deflect in your wrist to show. So it's kind of like a like a... 15 inch pound torque method, but um, don't have a torque wrench. And really, can you find the torque specifications for a float bowl on a carburetor? So now I'm putting back those two upper bolts that I gave up on when I chose not to try and break the choke. And if you're wondering why or what other methods I did, I was trying to pull the restricting choke plate uh, from the, uh, the barrel of the carburetor. It would not come out. And at that point, again, didn't want to risk breaking something when we had a 10-inch snowfall coming in less than 24 hours. Uh, and, yeah, so getting these two eights in at the top. Uh, Self-tapping sheet metal screws with a rubber washer for vibration. Um, one last quick little wipe. And I promise you, each time those were clean um, paper towels. <laughs> Uh, now we've got the non, I don't want to call it spark arrestor, but I very quickly realized, hey, this is backwards. Um, with the two eight millimeter um, fine thread bolts holding the screen on or the air filter, uh, off camera again, check the integrity of the gasket on that. And I spray clean the filter 
uh, because the neighbor recently had some home renovation work done and wanted to make sure that there was no drywall dust anywhere in this thing. So um, getting those two in, they did have evidence of factory thread lock, which these this was very, very similar, the motor itself, to the engines we work on at school where I teach. Um, so they were hard coming out, easy going back in. Um, uh, I gave them a little extra snug so that they don't vibrate loose, uh, when this puppy's running the driveway. And if they did, Mr. T, we'll just call him that. You can come to me and I'll have some spare bolts for you. So I get these snugged in. And then after this, it was literally just a matter of getting, um, the, uh, I don't want to call it an inspection cover, but a protective inspection cover back on. And while I fumble this, uh, take a moment, click like, click subscribe. Um, I do this all for you. So I'm really enjoying every minute of it. Uh, and now things that I have things in the works now to film for you guys that you never would have thought I would have filmed, but I figure, Hey, maybe someone will want to see me do this with, um, nearly 10,000 views for the channel, which doesn't seem like a lot because some people get 10,000 views in a matter of minutes, but, um, it's been a, a fun and interesting journey. And I never thought, uh, I'd have companies reach out to me and, and people privately messaging me saying that I've helped them. So it's pretty wonderful. Uh, and it's, it's exciting. So if you have ideas for something you want to see me do build or repair, drop it in the comments and I'll do my best, uh, in between my three and a half year old, my wife and the six week old child, uh, we'll do my best to get something going like that for you. If it's within reason. So those two, uh, torque spits were back in or Torx 10 mil bolt heads were in. I checked the operation of the choke real quick. Uh, the ignition worked flawlessly as well. And at this point, I do a test fire. So I open up the fuel. Uh, give it a second for the fluid pole in the carburetor to fire up. And guess what? It does. So here it is at this point, everybody. I uh, let it run for a good solid 10 because the cost of gas is better than it having to come back. Um, we work the throttle. Throttle's good. And uh, what I end up doing with every customer's item is um, a cold start. I let it sit for a couple hours, get bone cold, and fire it back up. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a little something. Have a good one, everybody. Stay warm.